dial 627 if you suspect you're being kidnapped you suspect where you are persons that have been kidnapped and are being trafficked are uh, around you hey gems you're welcome back to saffron cut and for today's episode i'm going to be spotlighting a particular resource we're gonna talk about 627 what do those three digits mean? Six two seven or six two seven. <laughs> However, editing so I puts it on the screen. You know how you dial one one two for rapid response from the police to crimes, emergencies, accidents, that type of thing. Six two seven is the number you dial when you need the help of NAPTIP. Now, you're probably wondering, what is NAPTIP? Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has been combating trafficking in Nigeria for 20 years. As Like this July, they're going to clock 20 years that they've been established. They're established by the NAPTIP Act itself. And why they are a key player in safety, security, and also intervention for sexual and gender-based violence is because they rescue a lot of trafficked women and children who are trafficked both externally and also internally within Nigeria for prostitution, forced labor, organ harvesting, and baby factory. The thing called baby factory, which is forced reproductive labor, more or less. And I just thought I need to highlight this particular resource that is you dial 627 if you suspect you're being kidnapped, you suspect where you are, persons that have been kidnapped and are being trafficked are around you, they are the people you call. So this episode I'm going to share a bit about um, why this particular agency is important and why you should have it saved in your phone 627. All right. Let's go. NAPTIP is established by the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Amend Administration Act. This flyer was shared at the coordination forum that I attended in June, and it gave me the idea for this video. So this is like a resource spotlight slash gender and law commentary video. It'll probably show in both playlists for Matt on my channel in case if you see it in both places number one i'm just going to highlight some of the key provisions of the act and their punishments so it says like the offense of you using um false pretenses of fraudulent means to take a person out of the country or into the country is punishable or by law uh if you see you misuse the persons that you're helping travel or for persons to have sex with them, which is more or less forced prostitution, you it's five years. I love how this particular flyer translates key provisions of the act into pigeon. So yeah, I'm just gonna read it. If you if I read it funky it's because I'm translating it into English like from pigeon english yes another offense is if you use like the m money to buy a person for them to just go and do prostitution in another country or even within nigeria it's five years jailable it's a five-year jailable offense and i think there's also you still pay a fine of five hundred thousand naira another offense is if you take a person that's under 18 years to sleep with or for you to use them to for other people to use them you know sexually abuse them sexually and also any other job like forced labor child labor is punishable for seven years and you pay a fine of like over one million naira. so i think it would be given by the discretion of the court uh, another offense under this particular act is any company that arranges to make people go abroad that's outside nigeria to do prostitution or to use them for forced labor it is seven years jailable a seven years jailable offense and you pay a million naira in fine so another offense is anybody that uses you know lies false pretenses you think you're processing uh a tr with a travel agent or you know a concrete travel agent a real travel agent without knowing that this is actually a trafficker one needs to be careful so yeah it's also punishable 
if you make people you you know you traffic persons to use them in armed conflict it is punishable under this particular act and seven years or more so there are other punishments like under the acts but those are just i think the i want to highlight anyway so the statistics is that nigerian girls and women make up 80 percent of the european sex trade that is a crazy amount of you know numbers at uh, work in June, 30th of June, the project Inspire by Women Advocates. I work as the communications officer for Women Advocates Research and Documentation Center. And we had project Inspire, Empower, and Reintegrate Women, 100 beneficiaries. It's a project supported by GIZ, 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 whichever one. And 100 women are beneficiaries of this. These are returning women, potential immigrant women and formerly trafficked women so i'm sitting currently beside my aloe vera and in the balcony and i see there are lots of flies and i think let us all just be preparing for when i have my farm and i'm sitting in my farm and doing this videos lol so yes and it's a sunday afternoon the kids yeah i thought this mic was not noise cancelling but apparently it's not so it is well anyway moving on so these women shared horrific stories, which of course I will not share for sake of privacy, but I just want to tell you, it does get better, it does get better, but at the same time, one needs to be careful. So having shared that, the work NAPTIP does, I've shared the offenses recognized by the TPA Act. <laughs> Let's go on to other things that are in this particular pamphlet. So NAPTIP has offices, zonal command. So a zonal command, according to what was explained at the um, coordination forum that I attended, a zonal command is any place that only occurs in a state that has a sexual assault referral center. It's called a SAC center. They're called SAC centers. Basically, sexual assault referral centers are places where persons who have experienced sexual violence can go to to assist, you know, in rape kits, medical care, and oftentimes sexual assault referral centers, some of them have um, recognition by court that whatever tests, whatever findings their doctors present are admissible for persecution of the perpetrators of sexual violence. So that is something to note. So they have zonal commands in Uyo, Inugu, Benin, Markodi, Oshobo, Lagos, Maduguri, Sokoto, and Kano Zonal. Then they have state commands. I think state commands are in, you know, across basically 11 states then they have liaison offices anyway the moral of the story is that save six to seven and you might just save somebody who you know you never know now i think to the final lap to tie this all together let's talk about the role of nap tip as recognized by the violence against persons prohibition act the vap act not the vap law in your state but the act itself the 2015 act naptip is placed as the organization that is in charge of enforcement of the vap acts provisions within the federal capital territory what does that mean if somebody violates you uh, sexually or by gender-based violence or even non-sexual gender-based violence or non-sexual sexual related violence stuff like stalking logical abuse emotional abuse from partners or persons around you yeah and you want to persecute stuff persons like that then naptip is the organization that will be in charge of investigation and persecution and trust me call them they are toll free hotlines work they work at least according to, at the coordination forum the testimonies people gave from different states were like they absolutely work they've called these numbers they've gotten the help they needed and they absolutely work so yeah i think that's all today for the resource that we're spotlighting and so for today's resource don't forget six to seven now catch me another day on saffron cut i'm a daisy Faye shire and you are welcome to this side of YouTube where we talk all things sex, reproductive care. I give commentary on gender and law. I share my lifestyle and adventures. And, and thank you for watching till the end. Mwah.